Welcome back to Completely Karen. I'm Karen. I am your divorce confidence coach, and it is my job to help you heal from the betrayal of your divorce. This is what I do with my clients, and I can do this with you too. Basically, I take you from betrayal mode to healing mode to creating an amazing future mode. And we do this in so many steps over so many weeks, but today, in today's video, I'm just going to teach you four things that are keeping you from healing after your divorce. I'm going to talk about the four things, why they're holding you back, why you haven't been able to heal. And then in each thing, I'm going to describe what you can do to be able to change that thing in your life so that you can start to move forward and heal and feel better and create the kind of life that you want after divorce. I have so many clients who are coming to me saying things like, I just want to feel better. I hate the way I feel. It hurts so much. The loneliness is so heavy. I don't know how to move forward. I don't know what my life is going to look like. The uncertainty is so scary. All of the things, right? And I know when you're in that space, it feels heavy. It feels real. It feels like nothing else is going to change and this will be your life forever. But I promise you it's not true. I can help you get there. This video, these tips that I'm giving you today will help you get started. So let's dive in to number one, all right? The first thing that you're doing that is keeping you from being able to heal is you keep living in this land that I like to call supposed toville, right? This is the land where you think that you're missing out on the life that you were supposed to have. Does this sound familiar? I know so many of us feel this way. I know that I went through this in my divorce. And I know that so many of my clients have struggled with this as well. You keep dwelling on thoughts about how your life was supposed to look, right? It was supposed to be a certain way. I was supposed to get married. I was supposed to have kids. We were supposed to live happily ever after. We were supposed to have this house and he has this job and I stay home with the kids and it's supposed to be this way. I didn't get married just so I could get divorced. This isn't supposed to be my life, right? It feels heavy. It feels true. And you keep replaying this story in your head, but I promise you that what you're doing when you continue to tell yourself that it wasn't supposed to be this way is it's keeping you in this land of pretend. Because how do we know that you were supposed to get divorced? How do we know? Because it's happened. That is how we know. Because it happened. We can wish that it happened differently. We can wish that we could go back and change the past as much as we want, but we cannot change the past. And the more we live in this space of rejection of what our life actually is, the harder and more impossible we make it to be able to move forward and heal, right? You aren't allowing yourself to be open to the possibility of accepting life as it is. You continue to reject the life that you're living right now you're not showing up in any kind of capacity where you can accept what you have and create something that you want in the future. This is the reality, is that we're here right now. Stop rejecting the life you have and then decide, now what? Doesn't mean you have to be happy about the divorce. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying, well, we should just be so happy that we're here and we're, we should just be so happy that our life didn't turn out the way we thought it was going to. No, be disappointed. Like you thought your life was going to go a certain way and it didn't go that way. And that sucks. And we can be so disappointed about that. But living and continuing to reject where you're at and continuing to tell yourself it shouldn't be this way, it was supposed to be different, just makes you continue to relive this pretend life that is not reality at all. So instead, I want you to open up to, this is where I'm at right now, and now what? Where do I wanna go from here? How do I wanna feel? What do I wanna think about my life? What do I want to decide my future is going to look like? That is your first step to healing is stop rejecting where you're at and just allow that acceptance of it. Doesn't mean you have to like it. Doesn't mean you have to be excited about it. Just open up to that acceptance. That will be the first step that will help you heal in your divorce. All right. The next step is 
you keep thinking that you're going to be motivated to heal. You're just going to wake up one day and you're like, today's the day I start my new life. I'm so happy and excited and I'm just going to go. What to do now, right? Because that's how we feel on days when we feel really motivated. We're like, get the running shoes on, go to the gym, do the workout, eat the healthy food. And then the next day we see the gym clothes on the floor and we're like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I am totally staying in bed. I'm eating whatever the hell I want and I don't even care, right? This is how it goes. We don't always feel motivated to change. We don't always feel up to the challenge of making changes and progress and healing and loving ourselves. And so I just want you to first understand that life is 50-50. There is going to be 50% of our life in the long run of things It's amazing, that works out, that goes the way we want, where we feel positive and motivated and happy and excited. And the other 50% is gonna be like garbage. We're gonna feel crappy. We're not gonna wanna do things. It's gonna be hard and testing and challenging. And we don't wanna wake up and get out of bed and go you know, create the life that we want. We don't wanna get up and get out of bed and heal from our divorce. We just wanna lay in bed and let the day go and forget all of our problems, right? We have days like that and it's okay. And it's in those days where you really need to show up with grace and compassion for yourself. Because many times on those days when we don't feel like doing it, we get mad at ourselves and we beat ourselves up and we tell ourselves we shouldn't be feeling this way. Why can't we just keep going? Why can't we just find the motivation to heal and to get better and to make our life better and da, 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 da. We just beat ourselves up over and over and over, which makes it heavier and harder and we feel worse. That is not what you need on the days when the motivation to heal and move forward isn't there. What you really need is to respect yourself, love yourself. Just, it's almost like I want you to take this container and I just want you to put yourself, your heart, your every bit of being in this container and just fill it up with love. Just call it the love container that you are going to place yourself in for those moments when it's hard, when you don't really want to do the work to change, but you know that you need to, you know that it's there and it's available to you. It's just going to be a little more work to do it. You're just going to love yourself, put yourself in this container, give yourself some compassion and some grace, and then do the things to move yourself forward anyway. This is how you move past those days when the motivation isn't there. This is how you keep yourself from going backwards. Because often we'll say to ourselves, well, I feel like I'll take two steps forward and 10 steps backwards, right? This is how we do it. We just don't beat ourselves up along the way. We just expect that some days we're gonna have all the motivation to heal and grieve and process and move forward and change and do all the things that we wanna do. And then other days, it's just gonna be a little bit harder. And those are the days when you really have to show up for yourself and just give yourself a little hug and say, what do you need today? Maybe we don't do all of the things. Maybe we just do one thing. Maybe we just love ourselves today and we just allow the hardness of divorce to show up and we just allow it to be there. And it's okay. We know that we are going to continue to move forward and grow and change and evolve into this new version of ourselves but it's not all gonna happen overnight. It's not all gonna happen in one day and we're not always going to feel motivated to do so. And that's okay. Give yourself the grace that you need on those days. Okay, the next thing that you are doing that is holding you back from healing is you're trying to do it all by yourself. You're already lonely after the divorce, right? This is one of the most common things that people feel after the divorce is so alone. And then you feel so uncertain about what your future is even going to look like, what it's going to look like for you, for your kids, for your family, for all of it. And that's scary. The loneliness is scary. The uncertainty is scary. And then you think, well, I just really, I really want to heal from this. I really want to change and create a better life but I can't go to my friends and my family. They can't give me advice. They don't even know what I'm going through. In fact, they've pulled away or they act weird around me or I just, they don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's weird. I have no one that I can go to who understands what this is like. And so you feel like you have to do it alone. 
This is a lie that your brain tells you when you're in a tough spot. Your brain likes to lie to you, okay? My brain does it, your brain does it, all of our brains do it. Because our brain is constantly looking for the negative. And so you have this idea that like, you have to go it alone. Nobody else understands, but it's just not true. There are thousands and thousands of coaches just like me, therapists who are out there, who have written books, who have made YouTube videos, who are doing podcasts, who have support groups, Facebook groups, who are you know coaching people in weekly coaching programs, taking master classes, doing all of these different things to provide you with the tools and the guidance that you need and want and desire as you move through this healing process. All you have to do is look for the one that resonates with you most and then work with them, hire them, read their books, listen to their podcasts, do the things that they're telling you to do, do the things that I'm telling you to do to help you move through this process faster, to guide you, to hold your hand. That is why we're here. All of the people who are out there publishing books, publishing free things to help you get along, things like this video, podcasts, having Facebook groups, um, creating things where you can pay and really be mentored and guided step by step, holding your hand along the way. These are all things that have been created by people who have gone through what you're going through. Like me, I got divorced after 20 years of marriage. I know the loneliness and the pain that you're feeling. I understand what it feels like to not know who you are. I understand what it feels like to not know where to go after divorce, to not know what it's going to be like for myself and my kids and my life. I understand what it feels like to feel stuck and to not know the next steps to heal. And I'm not the only one. There are so many of us out there who can help guide you through this process in half the time that it took us to get there. You think it's going to take you forever. I promise you it will be twice, three times, five times faster when you have someone guiding you through it step by step, who will hold your hand, who will support you, who will believe in you when you don't have the belief for yourself that it's going to get better, that it's going to get easier, that you will find love again if that's what you want, that you don't have to be lonely the rest of your life, that you are worthy and amazing and valuable and enough just as you are. We have all of that belief in us and we will share it with you and give it to you every step of the way. You just have to be willing to find us, to look for us, and to open yourself up to that guidance. So find someone who resonates with you and start work with them, whether it's through their free stuff, whether it's through their books, podcasts, their classes, their coaching programs, whatever it is, find the one that works for you and go with them. You don't have to do it alone. I promise you, we are here to help you and we want to help you. We want to guide you through it. Now, the last thing that is holding you back, that is keeping you from healing through your divorce is you are not celebrating yourself along the way. You need to shout out your growth along this process, through this process of healing, right? We are taught in society that in order to change and in order to heal and in order to grow and evolve, we need to be mean to ourselves, because if we're not doing it right or hard enough or fast enough or, you know, if we're not doing better, then we need to like beat ourselves up to get us motivated to be able to change. And it's just not true. Like we'll say things like this to ourselves, right? Like it's been a year since the divorce. Why are you not further along? Why are you literally in the same place? Like get out of bed, go clean the house, go do something with your kids to connect with them. You still cry every time your ex shows up or every time your ex texts you like you should be further along than you are. Why don't you just start feeling better? Start healing. Do better. This shouldn't be this hard. And we just say like these ridiculous things to ourselves about how we're doing it all wrong and we're just not good enough. And why can't you just be better? And why does it have to be so hard? And why are you always crying all the time? Like we have this voice in our head that is like just figure it out already, right? And we think that like by telling ourselves these things over and over that it's gonna be motivating and we're gonna wake up tomorrow and just feel like doing it and feel like being better and feel like we 
you're right, I should be better along. I should be farther along. I should be feeling better. I shouldn't be crying all the time. But guess what? Those voices, those thoughts don't actually create motivation. What they create is more pain, more shame, more rejection of ourselves, of our path and our journey. And so what I want you to start doing is I want you to take a look at any little thing that you've done along the way in your day, today, tomorrow, the next day, that is worth celebrating. Like, I got up and cleaned the house today. Give yourself a high five. Or I got up and I connected with my kids in a way that I haven't in a long time. We played a board game and it felt so good and so fun. High five. Give yourself a hug. Pat yourself on the back. Like, I set a boundary with my ex and I followed through with it. And I haven't done that in a long time. Awesome. Great job. Or I showed up for myself today and I told myself that I loved me no matter what happened. Awesome. Celebrate those little wins, those little changes, the little things that happen that we often just overlook because we're bombarded with all of the negative things that happen instead. Start looking for the little things that you are doing to grow and change and heal. Start writing them down at the end of the day and high-fiving yourself in the mirror or giving yourself a little hug or a pat on the back. Start recognizing that there is growth and there is change. And the more you start to look for it, the more you're going to see. And the more you celebrate it, the better you feel. And the more motivated and excited you feel to do more the next day. We get motivation and excitement and love and joy in our life from what we're thinking. And the, the nicer we are to ourselves and the more we love ourselves and celebrate who we are, the more change and growth we will create in our lives. It's all of the times that we beat ourselves up and beat ourselves down and tell us that we're doing it wrong. That is what keeps us stuck and unable to heal and move forward from our divorce. Just start celebrating even just the little tiny things that are showing up in your life, the little tiny things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, start celebrating those. You are amazing. You got divorced and you are killing it. As a mom, you are showing up and taking care of your kids and you are going to work and you are paying the bills. And sometimes you're making dinner and sometimes you're having cereal for dinner and it's all good. You are doing amazing. Start telling yourself those things. Start recognizing them and celebrating. I'm not saying you got to go spend $100 and buy yourself a new outfit. You can if you want to, <laughs> to celebrate. But I'm just saying like, give yourself a high five. Give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a little internal hug. I literally, I mean, I'm putting my arms around me right now. Like this feels good. Give yourself some love and celebrate you as you are growing, as you are learning, as you are evolving. All right, so those are the four things that I want you to start looking for, paying attention to, and create some change as you can. And I want you to know that if you resonate with me, if I connect with you in a way that feels good, that you're like, yeah, I understand, she gets me. I want you to know that you can set up a free consultation call with me. It's 30 minutes, we do it through Zoom. You can do it from your house. I'll do it from my house. We'll get on the Zoom together and we're just gonna talk. And you're going to tell me the things that you're struggling with and what's hard and what you're not sure is going to happen over the next however long after divorce. And we're going to talk about why you haven't been able to create the kind of life that you want, why you haven't been able to move forward and heal and love yourself and stop feeling so lonely. And then I'm going to tell you how I can help you get there, how fast it's going to happen and how you can literally watch your life change in an instant so schedule in the link down below. You can schedule it at your convenience and we'll just meet through Zoom and it will be amazing. I can't wait to talk with you. Thank you so much for being here and I will be back next week with another video. Mm -hmm.